you for coming. Um, we're going to get started, so make your way to your seats. Um, welcome to this workshop by Michael Aird. Michael is a senior research manager at Rethink Priorities, um, where he co-leads the AI governance and strategy team. He also does grant making for the EA Infrastructure Fund and assists some of Re Rethink Priorities' general long-termism team's work, which mostly aims to cause faster and better creation of long-termism aligned mega projects. So research can be hugely impactful, but almost all research isn't. Um, one thing that, you, that uh, can help maximize the impact of your research, including by improving career trajectory, is developing an explicit theory of change. In this workshop, Michael will give an overview of what theories of change are, why they're often useful for research, and how to build one, and you'll practice applying these concepts yourself. So please give a warm welcome to Michael. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, so this is, as was said, a workshop on building a theory of change for your, work, uh, for your research, uh, also known as one tool for maximally kicking global problems in the butt. Uh, we want to have really big impact on really tricky things, and to do that, we need to be quite strategic. And this is like one piece of how to be strategic, and so hopefully we'll all be upgraded on that uh, by the end of this. Um, yeah, so first, to like set the scene, uh, what are some ways research projects can go wrong? So yeah, I wrote that bio thing of like, almost all research isn't. Uh, what are some of the ways that research can fail to be highly, highly impactful? Um, a lot of research, I claim, is at least one of the following. Um, simply inaccurate. We're not gonna, like, we're not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna help you be accurate here. There's like other sources of advice on how to make sure research ac is accurate. Obviously this does matter though. Um, unclearly written. This also can like limit how much reach you can have and how much people can act on what you've done, but that's also not gonna be covered here. But the rest of them, we are gonna help you with. Um, accurate research, clearly written, but irrelevant to any important topics. A lot of research is like this. Um, or accurate, clearly written, but irrelevant to any important decisions. So it's not enough for your research to just be about farm down and welfare or global health and development or AI governance or something. It needs to be relevant to important decisions within those topics. It needs to somehow actually help something happen differently in the world. Not just in the right general area, but like changing the outcomes in a, in a net positive direction. Accurate, clearly written, but hard for key decision makers to use. So the people that you want to pull important levers, make important decisions, change things in big ways, they're generally very busy. Um, and there's a lot of sources of things that they could read. There's a lot of sources of advice. There's a lot of things they could be doing with their time. Um, how do you make it so that they can notice your stuff, understand your stuff, and know what to do with it? So you've got to make the implications clear, you've got to get it to them. Uh, or accurate, clearly written, but never even seen by these key decision makers. They just might not come across it in the first place. You might need to think about like, who are they and how can you make sure it actually comes across their desk and is like, salient to them and stands out among a huge crowd. Uh, this theory of change stuff is going to help with all of those things. This is some ways research projects can go wrong. There's also some other common failure modes that aren't exactly research projects going wrong, but still are you having much less impact than you could be having. So you want to not just shoot for like impactful, but like roughly the maximum net positive impact you could achieve in expectation. Uh, so this is some ways you could fall short of that high bar, which is good research and impact, but you could have done even better research. Sort of an obvious one, but still the theory of change stuff will help with that. Good research and impact, but you could have had more impact via something other than research. So definitely not everyone should be a researcher. This workshop is about research. Um, many of the lessons apply in other places. But I also want you to remember, like, you should be considering other pathways. And having a theory of change for your research and a theory of change for your career can also help you decide, how am I going to test my fit and check if research is the thing I should stay in, or if I should go and do excellent stuff in other ways. Or good research and impact, but not building you up to excellence. So you've just focused on, oh, I've got this output that's really useful, and it's useful for a decision maker but you haven't built your knowledge and skills or your connections or your credibility and your credentials and your ability to get other jobs to the extent that you could have. So your theory of change can also be about how you're building yourself. Uh, so this is all like the juicy stuff that you're hopefully gonna get uh, and then later I'm gonna help you get that. Um, yeah, so more concretely, some learning objectives for this, uh, this workshop. Uh, basically, don't do those things. Don't, don't have all those ways of falling short. Um, here's a meme from, I think, like 1998 that my dad liked and therefore I like. Um, so it could be the purpose of your life is to only serve as a warning for others and be yet another shipwreck. We don't want that. There's enough shipwrecks. There's like thousands of papers that are basically pointless, at least relative to what could have been achieved or some net negative. Uh, we don't, learn from them. Don't be another one of them. There's enough mistakes out there. So learning objectives more positively. Um, it should make, this workshop should make you able to 
understand the concepts of theory of change, path to impact, and back chaining, emotionally appreciate the value of these things, and of not settling for filling a gap in the literature. So not just you have the ideas, but you walk away like, this is resonating with you, this is like in you, and you're going to actually try to apply this. Understand and generate multiple types of path to impact the research can have. Understand why and how to think about decision makers when planning your research. So actually having the people who are gonna use it in mind and how you can identify who they are and how they're gonna use it. And a suggestion for later, not in this workshop, is to actually sketch a project plan for a research project. And I'll give you some like templates and guidance on that. Um, some of this will be familiar to people, some of it will be new, take the bits that are good. Um, there's a lot of things we won't cover. This is not a workshop on everything about how to do research well. This is like narrowly on the theory of change thing. I do have a bunch of resources on things like doing research efficiently, um, or writing clearly, or getting input from decision makers. Uh, and there's, I mean, it says here, uh, which is like a blue link, but on the worksheets you have, there's a, there's a bitly link to um, a collection of resources, uh, including these slides. So you don't need to like constantly be writing down everything on the slides. Just write down the good bits. Um, yeah, okay, so theory of change, what is it? What is this ma marvelous thing that I'm gonna tell you about? Um, as all good talks do, I'm gonna start with the dictionary definition. So Wikipedia says, um, it defines long-term goals and then maps backward to identify necessary preconditions. Theory of change explains the process of change by outlining causal linkages, this causes that, causes that, in an initiative. It's shorter term, intermediate, and longer term outcomes. Um, another way of framing it would be, what ultimate goals should you prioritize? What paths for getting there should you prioritize? What are the key steps in those paths? And how can you maximize the chance you successfully take all of those steps? So here's where I wanna be. Here's what I gotta to do to get there. How am I gonna make sure each of those links in the chain goes well? Not just, I'm gonna do something useful and it's gonna work out. Um, this doesn't have to be about direct impact of the project itself. It can be about building your career. Uh, okay, so some broad path to impact, and as soon as there'll be a Q&A and there'll be activities and stuff like that, it's not all talkies. Um, so broad path to impact, uh, impact via the work itself. The, what I'm trying to do here is give you sort of a checklist of things to think about and frameworks so that later you can apply that in the very specific situations you're facing with your research. So one broad path to impact is kind of the obvious one. It's the work you do itself makes the world better via being read and acted on or listened to and acted on, or whatever it may be. So you have the, the documents you produce, the papers you produce, the presentations, conversations, emails, whatever it is. Um, uh, Alan Dafoe refers to this as the product model of research. You've produced a valuable product. It also needs to be disseminated though, so it's not just the, you don't just like leave it there and then it's done. Uh, but still, it's about like that insight you've reached or that product you've reached. But that's not the only way. Another way is testing fit. So you can use your research project as a way for you to figure out yourself uh, what kind of field should I focus on? What kind of topics? What kind of methodologies? Should I do research at all? Which, which organizations? What type of organizations? This is testing your fit for future research roles as well as for other roles. Uh, if something increases your net positive impact in the future, that is impact, even if it's not, even if it has to flow through your future actions. And thirdly, relatedly, building career capital, building your knowledge and skills, credentials, connections, that sort of thing. Again, flows through your own actions, but still is impact. And you can optimize your research projects for these things. It can be better or worse for these things in concrete ways. Cool, so uh, some bad examples of theory of change, uh, things to steer away from, and then I'll give you some good examples. For example, I'll investigate how this worm's behavior changes when we increase its exposure to sunlight. Um, this probably isn't a very valuable project. It might be, there might be some specific reason, but probably not. But this probably just isn't a high priority topic. The world doesn't super need you to do this. Um, you could justify this by being like, oh, but this is important because prior research has considered only other worms, or prior research has considered only changes in temperature, or it's raised two hypotheses that this could distinguish between. Uh, that's not enough of a rationale. There might be some rationale, but you need more. Um, what important decisions will actually be improved due to your research? Aim much higher than just fill a gap in the literature. Okay, so some met example. That was like a bad example, probably. Some like met examples that are like better than a lot of the world, but still much less good than you could probably shoot for. Um, I want to reduce X risk. Nuclear weapons create X risk. I live in France. I'm going to look into French disarmament movements. This is actually better than a lot of the world. Like, you're on an important topic. There's something that can be done here, some action that can be taken that might make things better. Um, but France's nuclear arsenal just isn't one of the biggest factors. If you were just like looking at the world from above and thinking like, what needs to happen for nuclear risk to go really badly or really well, you're not going to be like, oh, we need to change what happens in France. It's, it's on the list, but it's not like top 10 or something. Um, so you, that seems like this person is focusing too much on like where they happen to be, and they're just looking around like, oh, what seems kind of impactful, rather than like thinking about how the world needs to be different and focusing on that. 
Another meta example, I want to reduce X risk, X center risk, nuclear weapons create X center risk. I'll look at how valuable reaching zero nuclear weapons globally would be. Um, I think there's room for reasonable disagreement on how meh this example is, but I think it's pretty meh, because basically I think that goal is just too intractable. It's not that useful to find out how good would it be if we reached global zero nuclear weapons, because I think we're just not going to reach global zero nuclear weapons, except in a very different future world, where things are already, like the game boards changed massively via AI or something. Um, so there's not really someone, like have you actually checked if anyone could do something big uh, about this project and whose mind you could change? Is there actually someone who can act on this and make this happen? Probably not in this case. It's uh, an intractable goal. I think. Uh, some more net examples. Um, I'll look into what interventions could best reduce the chance of huge increases in arsenal size, like nuclear arsenal size. Then I'll just publish all the thoughts I have somewhere. Um, this person's really close, this made up person. Uh, hypothetical alternative me, for example. Uh, this is a good topic, I think. Uh, this is like decision relevant, uh, but you can't just like publish it somewhere. This person should figure out what decision makers are actually relevant, who can act on this. Figure out the key implications for those people, like what are the key uncertainties they have, and what are the key things that they could do with this and should do with this. Highlight those implications clearly and upfront. Don't trust that they'll read your whole 50-page thing and like find somewhere and like glean the insights themselves. Like you've got to actually make it really crystal clear for them because they're busy. Publish where they're going to see it, and also share with them directly. Okay, so finally, a good example, uh, but this is simplified. It's not the only type of good example, but it's here, here's one. Um, I want to do is existential risk. I'm best suited to work on either politics, policy, national security, or similar. I should try each of nuclear risk, AI governance, and biosecurity policy. I'm going to start with nuclear risk. This is, like, this is a reasonable stance. And they want to testing their fit for this. Who are the key decision makers on that issue who might talk to me? Uh, some are effective altruism aligned funders, policy people, researchers. I'm going to ask what they think are the key risk pathways, decisions, and uncertainties. So this, this person's found some people who like, have levers they can pull. They have decisions they can make. They have resources they can allocate, and who will actually listen to you and care about the general framework you're operating from. Uh, let's find out what they need. OK, they say one key uncertainty is how best to reduce the chance of huge increases in arsenal size. Um, I, I, we can get, I can talk to you individually later about why this might matter. But basically, just like one of the ways nuclear war goes really badly is if there's a much huger one than is possible right now. So like, even though it's unlikely, we won't reduce the chance of it. But moving on. Um, I'll research that and figure out what key implications for the, what these decision makers should do, what are the key implications for what they should do. Then I'll write that up where they can see the usefulness of it right away. That's how I'm going to like frame it. And I'm going to publish that on the EA forum and also share directly with these decision makers. I'm going to put it somewhere where they might look and also bring it directly to their attention. Then they can fund and do advocacy, diplomacy, or further research to cause these interventions to happen. So this one it actually bottoms out in like a thing happening. And there's a plausible story here. And there's a plausible story by which that thing happening is a really big deal. Um, so the path to impact here, so I break it down again, just make it like really crystal clear. I'm going to increase clarity on what actions would best reduce the chance of nuclear arsenal increases. I'm going to share that with EAA-aligned funders, policy people, and researchers. This is going to cause more advocacy, diplomacy, or research tailored to reducing the chance of huge nuclear arsenal increases. Uh, this is going to lower the chance of huge nuclear arsenal increases. This is going to lower the chance of an extremely large nuclear war. That's going to reduce existential risk. So this leads to that, leads to that, leads to that, leads to that. And this is the thing we really actually intrinsically care about. OK, quick question. Uh, first, like mini activity thing. Uh, could someone think of some ways that this same project could also help with testing fit or building career capital? Oh, and yeah, like uh, pop up your hand, and then the mic person will run around to you, because we're recording this. So could this person, yeah. Um, it, could, it could build career capital by establishing you as a researcher in this field. So, for example, by doing this project, you're proving to policymakers, hey, I'm capable of doing really impactful, useful research, and that will put you in a better position to you know, take on research roles mm -hmm. and do more work in the future. Yeah. And yeah, uh, especially if you have a testing fit thing. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, can we get a mic? Yeah. Uh, it could also build subject matter expertise. So if you don't think you want to be a long-term researcher by building expertise on nuclear warfare, maybe you could go into an organization that does policy advocacy mm -hmm. or some sort of direct work in that area. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Great points. Um, there's also testing fit type stuff, which is like, 
am I good at this type of research? Do I enjoy focusing on nuclear risk stuff? Am I good at diving into that literature? But yeah, so you can establish credible signals of your expertise on a topic that means they'll listen to you later. But again, this is the thing you can optimize, and this is the thing you can fail to hit by default. To do that, you need to make sure this is written in a way that they'll understand and appreciate, and that they see it. And then to do the like building up your expertise thing, think about what other roles might want to go into. Do I want to maybe do grant making later? Or do I want to work in governments themselves? Or do I want to work on advocacy stuff? This will change what type of knowledge is most valuable for you to gain. Um, yeah. OK, and then just flipping that path to impact, just to make it extra clear, this is a back chaining version of that path to impact. So the prior one was like, I do this, it causes this, it causes this. Here we're going to start with what we want the world to end up like and work backwards to what we're going to do. Um, so I want to reduce X risk. Maybe I'll focus on reducing nuclear risk. Not sure. To be determined. Maybe I'll focus on reducing the chance of an extremely large nuclear war. Maybe, therefore, I'll focus on reducing the chance of a huge uh, arsenal size increase. Maybe I'll focus on helping EA aligned funders achieve that goal. Maybe I'll increase their clarity on what actions would best achieve that goal. So here we work backwards from where we want the world to end up to where we are now. We're not just like, oh, I live in France. Let's see what I can do from living in France. Uh, no offense to France. Um, OK, so quick, brief Q&A type break, just to check if everyone's with me so far. Uh, and then there'll be some worksheety stuff, I think. Anyone have questions at this point? Yeah. Oh, OK, a few. Maybe we'll just be those three for now. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering what you've said so far. How does it apply for more technical uh, to more technical research? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so more technical research. So th what I've said so far is especially focused on things where the decision maker isn't for the researchers. It's like someone who takes an action, implements a policy, makes a grant, chooses a career or something like that. I think it still does apply for technical researchers. So for, ex so for example, if you're doing technical AI safety research, you want to think about what are the ways that AI could make everything go really, really badly? Uh, what would cause that and what could prevent that? And then, well, to some extent, you want to think about that and then work backwards to what I'm going to do now. In the same way, if you're thinking about like clean meat research or alternative proteins or whatever, think about um, what kind of clean meat research or like what kind of clean meat or alternative proteins would be most transformative for reducing the amount of animal agriculture and suffering. And then, given that, what are the key bottlenecks to that? Given that, what are the key uncertainties? And given that, what am I going to do? Um, yeah, so it would, it would less involve looping in decision makers, more involve looping in researchers, but still involves like having a sense of like what's the map of the world and where do I want to end up. Uh, I think there was two more. This one there, one's gone away now. Can we get a mic to that person? Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm wondering what your advice is for making sure that the the research recommendations are tractable. I know you gave the example of like a tractability in general, but let's say you're recommending like a policy or a campaign or something that maybe you propose it to policymakers later, but the, the, you don't have the policy knowledge to, like what you recommend is actually not that feasible. Mm -hmm. So what do you do beforehand, before coming up with the topic to make sure you're not accidentally recommending something that's like not really, can't really be done? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think a lot of like not just this question, but a lot of questions at this workshop and in many other places, like people underweight the value of just like just check with someone, just like think about who's a relevant person and ask them. So um, that doesn't give you perfect evidence, but it makes you less uncertain. So you can just like ask someone who is in a policy role, even if you're not. You, you, you don't, the next step isn't get policymakers to do it, but you have someone who like broadly shares your values. They have good intuitions about what the relevant government acts like, what, what their incentives are, what, what like the landscape for them is, what the geopolitical situation is. And you ask them, like, hey, do you think it's plausible in the next five years if there was a big poli public policy campaign, public advocacy campaign, people would end up doing this thing I like? Or would they at least end up doing like some next best version or something like that? And if they tell you definitely, then go for it. If they tell you definitely not, probably don't go for it. If they give you something in between, think for yourself, ask a few other people, et cetera. Um, there's, there's some other things you can do as well. You can do like forecasting and stuff. But like one key thing is just like ask a few relevant people. Um, yeah, OK, I'll move on for now. There'll be more questions uh, later and at the end and stuff. Um, yeah, so next thing is three minutes to do uh, the first four questions on your worksheet. So there's a bunch of worksheets on the tables. Um, if you want to do it on your device, you can go to this link. Um, then there'll be two minutes to discuss with the person next to you. During this time, feel free to um, ask questions, and I'll roam around uh, quietly. So like, pop up your hand if you want. Small individual piece that I've worked on. OK, thanks, everyone. Uh, There'll be some more uh, worksheet and discussion time later. But coming back to the whole group stuff now. So wrapping up your co the conversations. Um, yeah, so uh, developing a theory of change. Some more things about why it's great. Just like really hammer it home. Uh, 
some specific things it can help you with, in my opinion. Uh, developing theory of change can help you make better decisions about each of the following things. Uh, which research questions and directions to pursue. There's basically billions of different research questions and directions you can pursue. It's a huge landscape of options. Each of these things are things where humanity doesn't know stuff and you can advance humanity's knowledge and you can come up with some reason why maybe that's useful. So that's not enough. <laughs> we want to choose the tiny subset that is the top priority thing, given that in the world there's basically only several thousand people who are focused on strategically trying to pursue uh, the most high impact things for neglected populations that most of the world ignores such as the future or animals or people in poverty, uh, people in extreme poverty. Um, so yeah, you choose from that huge space, what are the subset of things that have a really compelling theory of change? Um, which sub-questions focus on? Once you've chosen any of those topics, any of those questions, there's like, again, billions of different ways you could scope it out and different like little things you could look into. Uh, and each one you could look into, oh, I think this is my next point, how long to spend on a given line or piece of research. Each sub-question you could literally think about for about 30 seconds or spend like five full careers on it, like lead a team that's all focused on it or something. How deep do you go on each one? This is basically a matter of how critical this is to your theory of change. Like how important is really high clarity on this sub-question to what you want to be different in the world? Or is it basically just we need like a very rough answer or it pretty much won't change things? It's not the top priority thing. And also when do you wrap up a given project? Um, also, how to frame and write any outputs. So I, I've mentioned this a few times. A lot of this is like repetitive, like hammer at home, and then you can like apply it um, in the complicated ways later in your own life. But yeah, how to frame, write any outputs. Who, what do you title the thing? Who do you send it to? Um, what do you highlight in the summary? What key implications do you highlight? How do you structure it? What do they actually need to know? Uh, and what do you want them to do? Whether and how to disseminate your findings, who do you send it to, where do you put it, what sort of journals do you publish it in, what sort of conferences do you present on it at, if, if relevant. Um, and whether, when, and how to assess your pro progress and impact. So I think in, in the world in general, it's kind of hard to say if you're doing a good job and if you're, if you're doing useful things. Uh, it's, I think, harder than average for research, because often you do things for quite a while, and often the path to, like, you're not like doing something immediately in the world, you're like informing later actions. And it's often especially hard if you have like an EA mindset, and you want to actually cause really big important things that often take a long time, or pay off later. But, so this can be like emotionally draining, and also like limit your learning, but theory of change can help. Because you can have, for example, note, you can notice that my theory of change flows through one of these five people, or maybe someone else, but probably one of these five people reading this thing and doing a different action, or like some subset of the machine learning community, or some subset of like, yeah, whatever group it is, and you can actually check if they at least read it, if it changed any of their beliefs or behaviors, and if it changed them in a direction that you think is good. So you can just like literally ask them, or ask a sample of them. This doesn't tell you that the impact that happened in the world was net positive, it doesn't tell you it was the best thing you could have done, but at least checks like, does it appear that plausibly a really good thing happened, or did no one get this at all? Yeah, so basically it can help you avoid the failure modes mentioned at the beginning. Um, a relevant but oversimplistic quote is, plans are worthless, but planning is essential. Uh, I think, yeah, that, that's overstating it, but like, it's sort of true. I think theory of change is never like at the beginning you have come up with a theory of change, and then you just execute for six months in exactly the way you thought you would, and it all plays out exactly how you thought it would. Probably your scope is going to change a lot. Probably you'll find new opportunities to impact that you didn't expect. But this at least puts you in like, the right region of the map and tells you like, the sort of thing you're looking for, and then you can navigate better, rather than just doing random stuff, starting from a random point. Yeah, okay, uh, also one thing I wanna mention on like, the back chaining versus forward chaining thing, this doesn't really fit in right here, but uh, came from one of the questions, is both back chaining from where you want the world to be to what you can do now, and forward chaining from like, what options are in front of me right now, which ones seem like they could probably do useful stuff. Both of these are really useful. You want to like alternate between both, try on both lenses, see what they converge on. Uh, there'll be like better concrete advice for your given situation, but at a high level, just do both. And most of the world ignores back chaining. I think most of the world just sort of does whatever's in front of them, and so that's why I like emphasize back chaining more. But both are good. You should also be opportunistic, think about personal fit, yada yada. Okay, so some broad paths impact via the work itself. Again, I'm trying to give you a checklist of things to think about later. Uh, you can think about what kinds of decisions and activities can you influence. What are the sorts of things in the world that you might try to inform? Um, one is other research. This is like a valid thing. You can like lay a foundation for further research. You still want to think about like, does that research end up doing something? It still needs to like bottom out and actually something happening different in the world that's not just research. Um, but but it can, it's fine if like you're laying the groundwork for research that itself will have a good theory of change. Funding, it can change, you, you can change like which areas people allocate funding to or which specific interventions and how they scope them. Policies, what, what policies do governments pursue? What policies do uh, certain corporations pursue? Careers, 
uh, allocating people, like doing research that informs what 80,000 hours recommends people work on could be really valuable by allocating tens or hundreds of people to really important areas in a really good way, for example. Um, entrepreneurship and org strategy, you could do research that highlights that we need to have a new foundation set up or we need to have a new nonprofit set up or a new startup set up in some area doing a certain type of thing, and then someone can go and do that. There are people around who can incubate charities, and if you give them ideas, they can make it happen, maybe, if they're good ideas. Um, technology research and development and deployment, so things like what kinds of AI or bioengineering or uh, clean meat people invest in or avoid investing in, and how they do so, what kind of safety standards they have, that sort of a thing. Um, and other projects and programs, just like a catch-all, because I probably haven't thought of everything. Uh, so the reason I give you this is when you're thinking about a research project, you can sort of run down this list and think, like, can it plausibly affect important things in each of these categories? If not, probably I should drop it. If so, who are the relevant actors, and can I talk to them and find out what they need? So this can all be via influencing final decision makers or the people who can influence them. So careers, it can be about like a bunch of people reading your work and therefore changing their careers, or it can be like 80,000 hours reads your work and therefore makes different recommendations. Um, policies, it can be like the policymakers in government themselves read your work and do different things, or various like organizations that give them advice or do public advocacy campaigns um, read your work and do different actions because of that, and then policymakers do different things. Still needs to end up in the world being different, but it can be via a few links. Often, like for example, my own work, uh, it's often, we're not trying to, optimized for being uh, paid attention to by a lot of people who don't already share our goals. We have a lot of other people in the community who share our goals, uh, and then we mostly write for them and help them know what to do, and then they can be the next step on the chain. But it still needs to get to someone who actually has all these resources and stuff. Um, so uh, you can also consider a similar breakdown of stakeholders and also of EA versus non-EA. So you can think about like funding decisions or you can think about funders. Uh, and you can think about this distinction, often useful, not always, between like people already basically share EA values or people who don't. Um, the people who don't obviously matter a lot, just like the way you gotta frame things and what they care about tends to differ. Yep, and what, to illustrate one way to approach this, here's an excerpt from a database I made. You can find the database, I think, in that like list of resources that you can find at the bottom of your worksheet, um, just to inform some things that my organization did, or at least to hopefully inform some things that my organization did. I made a database of just trying to like list all sorts of actors uh, relevant to long-term as an existential risk and categorize them by like how involved they are in things like career decisions or policy decisions or funding decisions so that when people are starting a project, they can sort of like look at the intersection of like the topic they're focused on. Maybe it's like biosecurity or whatever. Maybe it's moral circle expansion and the uh, type of actor they're thinking about. And then, um, yeah, run down that list and think, should I talk to these people? What would be useful for them? Okay, so. Uh, that was some more of me chatting. Now, some more time on the worksheets. Uh, three minutes to do questions five to seven, then two minutes to discuss that with the person next to you. During this, you can ask me questions if you have some. Okay, uh, last three slides, and then a little bit more worksheet and chatting and Q&A and all that, all that fun jazz. Uh, so we're nearly there, guys, uh, or folks. So, another sort of Michael wants to give you a checklist. It's all pretty abstract and framework here, but later, hopefully, you'll be thankful and be like, oh, great, great, Michael. Um, so dimensions along which theories of change or ways of developing them can differ, um, which are all just worth having in mind, I think, as you're doing things. This is my own taxonomy. It's like home-brewed. Um, Back-chaining versus forward-chaining, we've talked about that a bunch. I'm not gonna talk about it more. Explicit or foreseeable past impact versus speculative and curiosity driven. So I think like a lot of research in the world is sort of speculative and curiosity driven. It's sort of driven by, oh, this seems interesting, this could be important, maybe let's look into this. Um, that's a reasonable thing to do that can often be useful if you have, if, if your curiosity is very well correlated with what really matters, which is the case for some people. So for example, I think Nick Bostrom at the Future of Humanity Institute seems to have done a bunch of work that's vaguely this flavor, but seems to have like completely immersed himself in the sort of like strategic questions that really matter for the long-term future going well, and that means his curiosity tends to be pretty well correlated, and he has a good track record, and so I can be like, yeah, just go for it. Um, but a lot of people, their curiosity would be just sort of like random. It would just be based on like what's intriguing to them. Uh, so I'd be like, where about that was explicit or foreseeable past impact is like, can I actually foresee a way this leads to something really good happening? A sp specific way or set of ways, even if each one's unlikely, there's like five representative examples of the kind of thing that can happen, and it seems like something like this might happen. Um, yeah. And then another option would be um, other directed versus self-directed, like another dimension. Uh, I'm putting this all as binaries, but these are two ends of spectrums. Um, other directed is you go to a bunch of people who have expertise or have decisions they need to make or something like that, and you say, hey, what do you think would be most useful or what would be most useful to you or to people like you? And you base your research substantially on that. 
the extreme form would be you ask for them to give you just like one thing that they most care about and you just do that. A different version would be you ask like five people and they each give you a menu of like five to 10 things and you pick from that based on what they each said plus your own judgment plus um, your personal fit and things like that. The other extreme is you just do whatever you think is useful. Maybe you've talked to them or something, uh, but pretty much it's just like, yeah, I have a strong feeling that this is useful. Uh, each of these things, I'm not saying like one's good and one's bad. Um, these are just like dimensions to be aware of. Uh, or another one is applied versus fundamental or basic. So applied could be thing, it, it differs depending on the kind of research you're doing and uh, what, what environment you're in, what field you're in. But for example, it could be trying to help inform one particular policy decision that's on the table right now versus trying to improve our strategic understanding of some issue. Or trying to like make some sort of fundamental breakthrough in a more like sciencey place versus trying to like tinker with some particular application of technology or figure out which technology could work. Um, and yeah, just like a random note that probably isn't very important is the second dimension is probably correlated with each of the others. Like being more to the left on the second dimension is probably more uh, to the left on the others. I don't know if this is actually important to say, but it occurs to me. Um, so which is best? There isn't really an answer. Um, it varies between people and projects. Each, each end of the, each of these spectrums can be best under different times, and the middle can be best under different times. I think it's often best to do a mix or do multiple, like try out back chaining, try out forward chaining, um, try out like what does my curiosity say would be most useful here versus like what, what, what has this explicit path impact, try out what do I think is really useful versus what does these experts and stakeholders think is really useful. But I would say, I think for most people, it's best to move from the left to the right over time. So to start fairly on the left on many of these dimensions and gradually shift towards the right. So for example, early on, not putting too much, like when, when you're very early to a field or very early to research or something like that, or very early to the sort of like problem areas you're trying to work on, uh, like very early to understanding like what really matters for long-termism or something, uh, probably it's best to not put too much weight on just your own judgment. Still really form your own views, like absolutely form your own views but like act to some extent based on what these people who have been in it for longer say would be most useful. Um, start with like back training from the world and then gradually move towards forward training, that sort of a thing. Um, yeah, okay, so some takeaways from me. Um, making a massive positive expected impact on the world is hard. This is, this is not a simple task. This is not, and it's not easy to observe how you're doing. Important cause areas are complicated. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'll do this thing and then clean meat, it goes well, yay. Uh, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of moving pieces, there's a lot to be figured out. Almost all research has way less impact than the impact many of you could probably have. We don't wanna shoot for the standard, we don't even wanna shoot for way better than the standard, we wanna shoot really high. And I think that is achievable. This project idea seems relevant to important cause area, it's a great start, much better than most of the world, but it's not enough. Explicitly thinking about theories of change and decision makers could supercharge your impact, I claim. And there are many types of theories of change and ways of developing them, and it's worth like trying on each lens as you start a project and alternating between them and seeing what they converge on. And often you shouldn't optimize for direct impact. Often the theory of change will flow mostly or entirely through improving your own later work. I think junior career researchers should often be focused on testing their fit, building their career capital, and then it pays off later as opposed to just this project. They're often correlated, but not perfectly. Like often what's good for the impact of the project is good for building your own skills, but not perfectly. Um, yeah, okay, and then recap of learning objectives, and then a little bit more worksheet and Q&A and all that jazz. Um, this workshop has hopefully made you super mega able to uh, understand the concepts of theory of change, paths, impact, and backchaining. You can complain to me if none of these have happened afterwards, like, let me know. Um, emotionally appreciate the value of those things and of not settling for filling a gap in the literature. Understand and generate multiple types of path impact that research can have. Understand why and how to think about decision makers when planning your research. And uh, I would suggest sketching a project plan for research project in the next month or so. I mean, there's different, different people. I don't know if you're actually working on research. I don't know if you're considering it. Maybe you already have projects you're working on. But like, consider sketching a project plan using this sort of theory of change type stuff. Okay, so we are, how long have we got? We've got uh, 12 minutes left in the workshop time. Afterwards, I'll be in the uh, room over there. Uh, so now we can have three minutes to do the last questions on the worksheet, two minutes to talk to the person next to you, and then a bit of Q&A. Okay, let's do two minutes of group. Oh, I've got, a, I've got to fix one failure mode I may have caused, and then a bit of Q&A, and then I'll release you all. Uh, so one failure mode I may have caused is causing you to be like, oh, I need to do like three months of planning before I start things. Uh, I'd be wary of that. Uh, basically, as you begin your research project, the whole thing of research is you learn stuff. Um, so do like be wary. Like this would be ideally at some sort of like iterative lean startup type model, where you do like a bit of like planning and thinking and stuff like that, then you do cheap, 
beginnings of your research, and then you check back in with the plan, and you like gradually iterate like this. So like, don't don't spend a billion years thinking. Uh, you can also like fast track the thinking by actually reaching out to people and talking to people. And I have like some resources on how to do that, talking to people well that won't annoy them. Um, but yeah, okay, a couple minutes for like people's questions if you have any. Hey, Michael, thanks for the talk. Um, I was surprised when you said that we should begin with more applied questions and then move to more strategic ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of going into long-termism, and if I, if I feel if I will just start with applied, some applied question that someone decided for me, I will just go into some random topic, maybe like nuclear stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but that might, I will never know if that fits what I, the kind of changes I want to make in the world, and then uh, I will just kind of gain career capital that's not relevant to me. Uh, these are the sort of uh, things yeah. I'm afraid of. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so one thing is like I think I think a thing that can help with this is being willing to pivot again later, like not being like, oh, now I've done six months of work on this topic, my whole rest of my life has to be on this topic. Um, another thing is, in your case, you have a bunch of research experience, so you're not like the you're not the canonical person who's like starting out or something like that. Uh, I, I know this person that we're colleagues. Um, uh, Mm, yeah, so but but so what I would suggest is generally try to like figure out what cause area you want to work on, like as a separate career planning type thing. Figure out roughly what cause area you want to work on, and maybe very roughly how the cause area works and what seems most important there. But then start on something like a concrete decision relevant question within that cause area. Learn a bunch about the cause area, gradually broaden your scope, and do more interdisciplinary, fuzzy, big picture things or something. This advice isn't right for everyone. This is mostly for junior people, and you still want a separate career planning thing to choose cause areas. I think we have one more question. Yeah, uh, maybe this is related, but it seems like um, if you're trying to, say, uh, focus on optimizing for uh, skill building, um, that uh, focus areas there can sometimes be quite orthogonal to a cause area. So, for instance, like, uh, if I want to um, reduce nuclear risk by improving policy making, like, I could go study policy, and that seems almost entirely orthogonal to, like, actually solving a nuclear risk problem, um, because you could apply those skills to just about anything. Mm. Uh, same thing with, with AI, right? You could apply uh, machine learning skills to all sorts mm. of things and only a few uh, that actually like reduce yeah. risk. So it, sort of you're asking, um, one could go and develop transferable skills without doing any like useful insight building on a given topic, but those transferable skills could help you later do work on that topic, and like, which one should you do? Yeah, that's right. I'm not quite sure how to apply the theory of change, yeah. unless like just working out which set of transferable skills is most likely to, yeah. you know, uh, produce direct uh, expected impact. Yeah. So I, I would say like generally, um, yeah, you want both transferable skills and like specific skills, and usually you can probably get both at the same time, and that's best. So like if you could learn about policy, but all the concrete examples you focus on are the cause area you want to end up fixing, or you learn about just like how to do ML stuff, but like some degree of concrete example focus thing that seems good. Uh, like trying to do stuff at the intersection seems good. Sometimes it will be best to just like do completely random pointless stuff, pointless in itself, like work at some random think tank doing pointless projects, but it makes you amazing, and then you do great work, but like ideally, all things, all other factors held constant. If you can do the work on the topic, you're getting more learning value per like year or something. So it's going to be person specific. Uh, yeah, another thing I would flag is like your research project isn't the only way you're learning things. So on the side, you can like learn other stuff in other ways and stuff. I don't know. I shouldn't be holding a water bottle and just gesticulating with that. It's not very professional. Um, okay, we should probably wrap up there, but then I'll be out there. So go forth and have impact, and you can talk to me there if you want.